coordinators that join us as we go. But um, basically, uh, tonight is uh, all about uh, getting any questions or um, clarifications that you need. Uh, get those answered, and um, we're, we're happy to, to help you with those. Um, again, if you uh, do have any uh, thing as we're going while Steve or Eric in particular are presenting, just throw that in the chat and we can uh, address those as we go. Um, I was talking to Steve uh, just a little bit ago and just uh, telling him that uh, I think uh, uh, basketball wide, I think our officials across the state are doing a, a really nice job of, uh, you know, managing their business, you know, work the games and go home and, um, and, uh, just trying to stay healthy and stay upright and all those kind of things, um, is a challenge in a normal year, but, um, obviously, uh, some added elements there, uh, this year as well, but I think we're doing a pretty good job and Steve and Eric have a few things to touch on. Um, but I don't think there's anything that's really, really significant, uh, that's that's out there just some small stuff that we can work on as we go and um just keep uh, keep working hard out there so um i guess just from my perspective uh the things that i've that come across uh my desk or that i have conversations with steve uh about uh we try to put those in the memos and in the training tapes and cover it that way um but uh, my conversations with Steve have been really positive about what we're seeing out there. So keep up the good work in, in that regard. So at this point, I'm going to turn it over to Steve and Steve's going to cover uh, some items that he has seen either in his games that he's worked or observed, and he's been out observing quite a bit. Uh, and then Eric will do the same uh, as well. So Steve. Get you unmuted and then we'll be good. There you go. Can't hear Steve. I can't. Up. Oh, there, there he is. Am I missing? Oh, there you are. Well, we could see you. We just couldn't hear you for some reason. Oh. I think we can hear you now. Okay. Uh, All right. I want to thank everybody for joining tonight. Uh, it's 50 below outside. We might as well just talk some basketball inside. Um, I'm echoing what Jason had said before. Uh, I've been very proud actually of the work I've seen from everybody, uh, especially uh, staying in your primaries. Uh, oh, we look really good when we're doing that. Uh, it, it takes us out of the situation where we got one 800 foul um, and it sells the whole program. As you know, when we talk that uh, our pre-games, we say, well, we, such and such as our primary, we break the floor up, however. But then trust your partner. Well, the big thing that I have seen this year is that when you are the trusted partner, you're making the call. Uh, Jason and I have yet to receive a phone call from any coach uh, saying that they called everything. So do what we've asked you to do, and you have been doing it. You're getting the rule book in play in the first half. We're getting an off ball call in the first half. It's setting the program up. Now, we're in the middle. Uh, we just passed the middle of January and February is right around the corner. Uh, we're gonna have, the, as uh, Roy would always say, we have the cream separating right now and we'll have teams that have uh, hope and teams that don't have hope. Uh, we can't go one way or another. We have to continue to do the outstanding job you have. Uh, so I can hope that you can stay healthy. Uh, COVID is ravaging not only the schools, but uh, the officials uh, do everything you can to stay safe on that. Uh, checking in with the schools, not only your two days before, but uh, you also better make a call day of because they don't know if the other, team tested positive 
if they have transportation or whatever goes on. So just save yourself a headache and check in the day of, or at least leave your number that they can contact you uh, on the day of if anything comes up. All right, on to, on to the things I said, uh, seen, excuse me. Uh, staying in your primaries, outstanding job. I like to see us pick up a little more on some uh, uh, traveling on the three-point line. We're getting a lot of shuffles and stuff. And we talk about, well, it's just a little shuffle or a little hop. Well, if you're a shooter, that's all you need to get everything squared up. So we got to concentrate, find the pivot foot. And I think traveling is the hardest call we have to make uh, because of the speed of the players. And not only do we got to see if they have control of the ball, we got to see what their feet are doing. So when they do catch it, Got to look, take that look, glance down to see what you put. You think, and not think, but you know which one's the pivot foot. Then if it gets picked up, and unfortunately I see a lot of that pivot foot picked up, and a whistle, an air goes into a whistle, well, it's not traveling until it goes back down. So uh, be patient on them. Uh, do the best you can on finding it. Uh, if you, but if you can't see the ball in their feet at the same time, can't really make a legitimate traveling call because uh, they got to have control. Um, I like the fact that the post play has been pretty good in refing verticality. Uh, it's uh, been outstanding. Um, and I like the way the crews have been communicating. If you have a double whistle, uh, the trails and centers are doing a good job of posting uh, and then coming together or I think we lost Steve again. Yep, we lost him again. It's frozen now. I'm sure it's outstanding material. <laughs> out of the foul. I'd oh. like to see bouncing back in and out. Uh, I'd like to see the fact that you do a preliminary at the spot and then you go over to the table. Uh, those are the two big things that I've noticed and that uh, we all can do a little better job on. Uh, I am out reffing with you uh, every Tuesday and Friday, and whenever COVID calls, uh, we got to go to work. So, uh, Eric, go ahead. Get my mic on. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Okay. Yeah. I just like to echo what both uh, Steve and Jason said in terms of what we're seeing on the court this year. I'm extremely proud of the officials that are working this year. We're working under extreme circumstances, but uh, uh, you know, it, we all know it's a fluid situation and we're all making the, the best of it that we can. Uh, I did not officiate last year, primarily because of COVID. Uh, I was hoping that this, the situation would be a lot better this year, but uh, I certainly understand and I feel, I have a much better feeling and understanding for what officials dealt with last year. So. Again, I just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you for everything that, that you're doing for the schools, for the players, for the coaches, for the fans, for the administrators. So uh, just a couple of things. I, th I think um, one point of emphasis was illegal screens or is illegal screens. And I think we're getting a much, much better at officiating uh, the screening action, especially that high ball screen. Um, we're making sure that the, uh, the person that is setting this, first, well, first of all, we, we're making sure that the, both the trail and the center in that particular case are watching the offensive player, the defensive player, and the screening action that's going on. Um, and I think the schools, the, the players are actually uh, benefiting from that because uh, they know if, if illegal screens are going to be set, that we're going to call it. Uh, so not only do we want to call the illegal screener, we also want to protect the screener if they are setting a good screen. We need to uh, do a better job of calling off uh, defensive players pushing through good screens as well. So um, the other thing I'd like to mention is uh, when we're reporting timeouts or we're, or we're reporting bench warnings, Let's get away from the, the, the 
white coach, black coach, red coach, green coach. Uh, if you have a, a timeout or you're reporting a bench warning, 30 second timeout, 30 second timeout, Wyzetta coach, clock please. I think Jason can talk to the situation that we had last year uh, that created a little bit of controversy. So I think if we, if we do that, uh, we'll avoid that situation going forward. So it's, it's not, a, not a big change, just be cognizant or more aware of the teams that are playing. So when you go to report a timeout or you go to report a bench warning, you know which team that you're gonna report it against. Um, the other thing I've noticed is, you know, when we hit the floor at the 15 minute mark for uh, the teams warming up, you know, that's not social hour time. That's not the time for us to, to visit with one another or visit with uh, fans that are, that are passing by. I know it can be difficult at times, but uh, uh, during that time, we have a job to do. We should be obser observing the uh, respective teams that we're responsible for. You know, you can pick up a lot of a lot of things just by watching the team warming up. Uh, the other night I was watching team warming up and uh, I noticed that they were doing a lot of bunny hopping at three point shot and say, and I just mentioned it to them at that point that, you know, uh, you wanna be careful of that bunny hop because that's gonna be a travel in the game, you know, just, just little things like that. So, um, and what was the last thing? Two twenty high ball screens. Um, Oh, here's something that I've noticed. It's not a real big deal, but I think we've sort of gotten lazy with it and we, we, we've accepted it, but we're not calling double dribble as much as I think we should be. And the situations that I'm thinking of is that the ball might be loose for whatever reason. And the person that is controlling the ball or the person that gains possession of the ball may be doing so with one or two dribbles to the floor. And then after they pick the ball up, they dribble again, and we're allowing that to happen. So if a player is controlling the ball with a dribble, and it could be just one dribble, but I've seen it one dribble, two dribbles, they pick it up, and then they drip, they put it back down on the floor, and we're not calling double dribble. So uh, most of the time I see it, it's a, it's a loose ball, or if a teammate is throwing a ball to another teammate and they fumble it, and they, they, they dribble once, they pick it up, and then they dribble again. Um, that is a double dribble. So not a big deal, but something that we can watch out for and maybe get a little bit better at. So that's all I have. All right. Thanks, Eric. Yeah, I'll just piggyback on just a couple of those things. Um, one on the screening side of things, you know, we've talked, you know, since the beginning of the year, for sure, you know, with our clinics, uh, even going into last year about, if we can have two sets of eyes on screening action, uh, we'd like to do that. Um, sometimes it's not possible just based on where the screen, you know, takes place. But if we can get two sets of eyes on screens, um, that's really going to help us out with accuracy uh, on that type of call. Because uh, as you know, if you're, if you're officiating a competitive matchup with the ball handler, and then there's a pretty, you know, pretty tight screen uh, on the ball, now you got one person trying to officiate two pretty difficult matchups at once. Um, so if we can, now, if it's a two person, two person game, then, you know, we do the best we can and, um, you know, see what we can see and get in position to, you know, to view that. But if we have a three person game, we have the opportunity to uh, get two sets of eyes on, on ball screens. Um, that's, re that's really going to help us. Uh, accuracy why on that accuracy accuracy wise on that piece and then as it relates to the color uh, of the team when we're reporting um, certain things to the table um, we've just we've gotten ourselves in trouble um, you know indicating certain colors uh, you know of coaches when we're re in particular when we're reporting uh, bench warnings and as, as you all know, when we have a bench warning or a technical foul or something like that, you know, our, a lot of us, our emotions, uh, tend to, uh, you know, get out a little out of whack and we get our heart rate going and so forth. Um, and maybe a little emotional. And when we start incorporating colors into describing a coach or a particular coach, um, 
that isn't necessarily the, what we want to be doing. So um, to Eric's point, I think when in particular, when we're reporting bench warnings, but I think we can do it with timeouts and, you know, some other uh, pieces that we're reporting to the table. Let's just, let's just indicate the, the team name, uh, the school name. And then uh, if it's a timeout, it's 30 seconds, it's full, it's a bench warning on the YZ head coach or whatever it happens to be. Um, I think that's really going to serve us well um, as we move forward. Um, I get it. If it's a blocking foul on black 42, you're going to come up and say black 42 block, you know, two shots, those kinds of things, no problem. But when we're talking about um, situations where we might be a little bit more emotional and we're reporting the, to the table, I think it would be uh, a better plan for us moving forward to indicate the name of the school when we're reporting that uh, versus a particular color. Um, when it, if you, if you saw the, um, the last two tapes, you know, we've had a, um, we had a couple of plays in those, uh, particular play examples that I think we see quite a bit where, uh, we have, uh, pretty significant contact at, at the part of, on the part of the court that's in a gray area, perhaps between two officials or right on that, uh, right on that line um, in particular in the paint when we have a block charge play involving a secondary defender we want the lead to have primary on that because they should know whether they got there on time established legal guardian position you know etc um, if it's not a block charge play we're going to draw a line right down the middle of the paint now we're talking about three person coverage now um, and anything to the c side on that line they're going to take and anything to the lead side they're going to take and I think what will really help us with that, A, pregame that and make sure we're on top of that as a crew. Secondly, as leads, if we're mirroring the ball, okay, as the lead and we close down to the lane line, if the ball goes over the other side and settles right away, because we're already closing down and we're moving towards that lane line, it's going to be very easy to flex and move, and move right into that natural transition. And because we don't want the, the center to have to officiate the ball and six other players because we're, we're not getting over the other side uh, of the court. And I, I know in, in high school basketball, as it stands now, with no shot clock, that you feel like you're a ping pong ball and you go back and forth, you know, 12 times on a possession. I get that. Um, and the shot clock will obviously assist with that. But for the time being, if the ball gets over the other side and we're mirroring it and we're closing down towards the lane line, it's going to be very easy to, to move into that, that flex. And I'll be in just a natural transition versus kind of being herky jerking start and stop, but really, really pregame that because I think in one of the play examples, we had pretty significant contact and we no called it. I think, I think a lot of it had to do with some uncertainty about who had the play number one. And uh, number two, um, just our positioning as it relates to the lane line and whether we could pick up that contact or not. Um, and that's a tough play. Uh, I've screwed up that play many times. So um, I, I get it. Uh, I just think it's a piece that if we pregame a little bit more, uh, we're going to be in a, a much better uh, spot uh, with that. So um, outside of that, you know, like I, like I indicated at the beginning of the meeting, I think we're, we're doing a nice job. ADs and coaches for the most part have been, uh, um, very complimentary of the work that's being done out there. And, um, you know, again, if we have any things that come up, I'm, I'm planning on putting those in the memos and tapes and getting those out to folks. Um, but, I don't have any major concerns with the, with basketball officiating. I think we're in a good spot. The only thing we need to do is keep getting new people uh, into the business um, and uh, you know, keep it going. So um, if there isn't any other questions or concerns at this point, I think, uh, you know, we can conclude for the evening, but happy to answer any questions if anyone has those at this, at this point. I have a couple other items that I, I okay. went to two on my uh, stuff here. Um, 
we're ha we're over halfway into the season uh and access to see your games has never been better either on youtube or huddle or uh nfhs or uh network uh, i would encourage everybody to go in and take a look at yourself uh see if you're not make sure you're not falling into any bad habits um because the tapes don't lie uh so uh you might not notice that you're counting enough um or you're not counting at all when we should be uh so go in on that i also i've liked how i have noticed a lot of communication and coaches coming out uh shaking their heads yes or okay that type of stuff so whatever you're saying keep up the good work um also work on maintaining uh the bench when you're on that side we got a lot of kids standing up and getting excited uh, you know just give them a, a wave uh, tell them to get back down um and the other thing is on pre-game dunks um reread uh, your rules on that because if you do have a pre-game dunk not only is the player uh get a uh, direct but the coach gets an indirect and you lose the coaching box um and once they do that one time that usually takes care of the situation for you so um and Eric talked about that, uh, you know, in that social hour before. And also, I ask you're gonna, I'm gonna say the uniform police, but it's been very good, uh, pretty much. But uh, now they tend to might slip in something in. Um, it's not hard to just tell them, you know, take it off or tuck it in or whatever. But let stay on it. We've gained a lot of ground. I don't want to slip and uh, show up to the section game. And now we have, uh, you know entire wardrobes out there that uh, need to go so good job on that everybody so all right yeah i think just on that steve on the you know the the dunking or those pieces you know steve and i talked about it earlier you know judgment is one thing we're going to miss judgment calls you know we have a hundred of them a game of course we're not going to get them all Right, but what we can control, what's under our con our control, is rules knowledge, and um, you know, if we do have something that occurs in a game, you know, we have the ability to control what we're doing with that because we should have our nose in the book. You know, we're gonna miss block charge, we're gonna miss traveling, we're gonna miss double dribble, we're gonna miss illegal screens, we're gonna miss all of that, um, and that's gonna happen for the rest of rest of time you know the kids are bigger and faster and stronger all the time but our rules knowledge is something we can control so um you know if we can keep our nose in the book and um that will keep us out of trouble because the book will always back you if you do whatever the book tells you to do um you can always be backed 100 percent. it's hard to back hard to back people when they kind of make up their own uh their own rules as they go so and there's plenty of rules i'm not i'm not a fan of i'll be perfectly honest but um you know we still we still have to enforce those rules even the ones we're not crazy about so but that's a small thing uh just a small reminder i think we're doing a really nice job and let's keep it up and um stay in touch with coordinators that's what they're for if you have any questions as the season goes you know shoot them an email a call um they're happy to answer your questions and we do get those from time to time and we forward them off to Steve and Eric and the rest of the coordinators to, uh, to assist with that, but, um, be in touch with them, uh, communicate over communicate, uh, with coaches, with your partners, with the schools, um, and, uh, have a good finish to the season. Um, fill out the uh, tournament application form. If you receive that, if you haven't done that, make sure you get on that so that uh, we can fully consider folks uh, for the tournament. Cause the plan at this point is to have a full state tournament. Um, both of which are primarily at the university of Minnesota, both boys and girls. Um, and uh, as it relates to the testing and the vaccine and all that kind of stuff, I can't really tell you much right now because it's really fluid and it changes all the time. Um, and perhaps some of that or most of that or all of that won't even be in place by the time basketball rolls around. Um, so 
hard to say anything about that at this particular point in time, other than, you know, do what you can to stay healthy and stay upright as we uh, finish the season. So with that, we'll, we'll call it a night. And if you have any questions, you, uh, Eric and Steve, uh, and I will just stick around here for a couple minutes. Thanks guys. Appreciate it. You're welcome. There is something in the chat, Jason. What was there? Uh, can you share a rule number or reference on pregame duck? I don't have mine. Steve, you want to see if you can find that? I have my book here, but about, about dunking in the pregame. Files, technical files. Hold on. Usually, all these questions that you that we receive uh, are answered in the casebook. That's when everything, that's where everything has been bizarre has showed up. So go ahead, Eric. This is, oh, this is stuffing a dead ball. Correct, Steve? Yep. Yeah. So if you, um, if you look at, uh, that'd be in rule 10 page, page 64. Um, and 65 has the uh, the direct technical foul on the player and then the indirect on the coach. I'm looking specifically for ducking the ball. Yeah, it 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 doesn't it doesn't say dunking during pregame. It's not that clear. It basically says dunking stuffing a ball during a dead ball so okay so obviously during pregame it's ball's dead <laughs> haven't even started yeah it looks like section five article one yep. Yep. letter i yeah. um so Thanks, guys. That's why I asked. It was about the, it was about the dead ball stuffing, and I assumed it was the same thing. And when you mentioned it tonight, that helps a lot. So appreciate yeah, it. it. Thanks. It, it does. You use that. Uh, you know, if you have that whistle and it's, uh, it's at the free throw line, the kid takes another dribble and dunks it. That's not what we're talking about. That's right. that's totally acceptable. But now if he dribbles three quarters of the length of the court and then throws it down, uh, that makes it pretty simple for you, uh, for us to make that call. And Cruz, don't be afraid uh, to get together and talk. I don't care if you do it, you know, 30, 40 times a game, as long as we're getting the right on, right on the other end, that's fine. Um, especially when it comes to these things that we don't see that often uh, or if you feel that something's not right um, go to one of your partners and say here's what I got it's it's kind of like uh, I tell our in my pre games I tell if we have anything involving a technical foul intentional foul flagrant foul one of us has to get to the calling official and let's talk it through first before we go over and report that way we're on the same page uh, and everybody that needs to know knows what we're doing. Um, so great questions. Uh, so yeah. I can't see my chat. So I, um, so. I'm getting, uh, I just got a direct message or two, but otherwise nothing. Yeah, I don't see anything either. Uh, so a question about, you know, where the teams need to be on the second horn on timeouts. So, you know, so first horn, we're, we're telling them first horn, you know, let's, 
we're not we're not in their huddle but we're you know in the neighborhood you know asking them to to wrap it up you know and then on the second horn you know as long as they're making some progress to get out there we can work with that but if it's a little bit longer then let's have a discussion with the coach about you know when the second horn goes we got to be about to be breaking up and come on out here um so uh, try to work with them best as you can before we have to go down the, the path of, of delay warnings and so forth. That's a good, good part too. It's a warning. <laughs> uh, you, we don't use them enough. Uh, and since it, it is a tool in your toolbox, uh, like the, that very situation that just happened there, they're delaying coming out. You go over and it's a you know delay a game warning on whatever school. Uh, so then everybody's work. because when you give a warning, you're basically giving that oh, I think we lost Steve again. <laughs> um so well maybe he'll come back. But anyways, um I think that's it. That's all I see in the chat. So um oh uh let's see um expectations for the anthem and player introductions um is it fine is it fine for you to be over uh or by the table yeah i would say it's fine but i would say it's equally fine and probably recommended that you be on the opposite side um and if players come up to you and they're going to fist bump, I, I mean, I guess, but I'm, I'm hoping that schools are not doing that anymore considering what we're going through. I'm hoping they're trying to avoid that kind of stuff, but I'm so sure Jason, it's out there. Jason, maybe I can share what, what we've done to address this issue. We, the referee in our games has told the coaches in the, in the coaches meeting that, uh, we will be opposite table for both the national anthem and player introductions. And we request that their players not come across to fist bump us. And that has worked fairly well, except for one, one, one occasion. Yeah. Thanks Eric. I, that's a good recommendation. And we did do that in several other sports as well to say, you know, to the coaches, Hey, just, just trying to avoid unnecessary contact if we can avoid it. And obviously there's going to be contact between the players during the course of the game. And they're going to be close to us as officials and those kind of things. But if we can reduce some of that, I think, um, I think that's the best, best plan. And to communicate that with the coaches during the pregame, I think uh, does uh, set that, set that tone or that expectation for them. So Um, Steve, do you want to comment on the second uh, delay? Uh, like I said, I can't see my chat for some uh, So the question is, is uh, what if we have a second delay, you know, so, you know, wiping the ball or pushing the ball, you know, away, you know, after made basket or, you know, delay coming out of the, the huddle, et cetera. And uh, just to confirm, Steve, Eric, uh, others that in high school, they get one warning for all of those things. Correct. There, yes. There's yeah. The four delays that yep. we have. Right. Where in other levels you might get separate warnings for each of those, but in high school, you just get the, you just get the one and then anything beyond that, um, is going to be a technical file. So I think that's the question, Steve is, is it direct, indirect, charge of the bench, et cetera. Uh, if it involves the um, not coming out for your timeouts, uh, that is a, a charge to the head coach. Um, uh, so that one's on there. The one where it's uh, delaying the game by uh, slapping the ball out of the play and stuff like that, uh, those I, I go to the uh, – uh, a player uh, that did it. So, is that indirect to the coach? 
and all those uh, and all those count uh, on the the team totals too. Uh, but it's not two. They don't get two. Whenever you have a direct and then a, it's an indirect to the coach, that only uh, that's not two team fouls that go up. It's just one. So. And we can follow up with uh, some uh, the exact rule references. Uh, we'll put those in and put them out uh, to everybody for tomorrow. So, so that we're all on the same page, which has been yeah. very good. Yes. Yeah, so, Steve, make note of that so yep. we can put that in the next one uh, and address that. And then, um, yeah, if a team if a team has a, a delay warning, then yeah, that's in effect for the remainder of the game. Yes. So it's not, they, they don't get a clean slate at halftime or those kind of things. So um, if they do have that, it's going to remain for the rest of the game. Okay. Um, good work, gang. Uh, have a good rest of the year and, and evening. And um, we will hopefully see some of you, several of you in person at a game here uh, at the end of the year. So be well.